How do you relate the feeling of awe at aesthetic experiences with your understanding of the divine? Ah, hello, Dennis. We here to be silly again, are we? Well, lucky for you, I am always up for making fun of the ridiculous things you say and the nonsensical claims you make because I'm such a lovely, huggable teddy bear of a cosmic horror. And to start off, you're already not going to answer their question in anything approaching a complete way. Because the question asked was about aesthetic, not aesthetic, unless you're talking specifically about fuck boys. You're not one of those, are you, Dennis? At least, I hope not. Well, since you confine it to aesthetic experiences, I really am happy about that because it's, it's, it, it would have been a very broad question. And yet you still manage to make it even smaller because there's more to aesthetic than just the music. And really, what's wrong with the broader question? Surely if your god is doing of the reeling, it should be very easy to explain how all the things relate to that definite existing. Petty, maybe, but just goes to show how limited Dennis is in his braining, frankly. So I will tell you that some music, without question, makes me feel... Aroused? Titillated? Downright frisky, perhaps? Correct. I've always considered there to be many songs that are fantastic to f*** to. I like to call it sleazy music. Anything with a slow, pounding bass line tends to do the trick nicely. Although, I just can't picture Dennis getting down to Rob Zombie's Living Dead Girl or Static X's Cold, but that's mostly because I don't want to. The Divine. Oh, boring. I mean, The Divine, it's just so bleh. Well, at least the kind of divine he's talking about. You know, the fake god kind. If he means the real kind of divine, well, yeah, sure, whiskey exists, but... If you're not listening to banging tunes whilst already divined out of your head, you're just not doing it right, mate. As many of you know, I'm very deeply into classical music. I conduct orchestras periodically. Conduct them to what? Suck, I bet. And what is it with the pretentious and orchestral music? I mean, it's fine. It has its place, but, and I cannot stress this enough, it doesn't make you smart or refined or better than anyone else. It's a preference and one that you don't, need to have to be smart. I mean, we all know that when the cameras are off, he's immediately bopping to the cheeky girls and their admittedly deeply profound lyrics. Come and smile. Don't be shy. Touch my bum. This is life. Mmm. Cheeky cheeky. I, I fell in love with it. It was love at first sight, at first hearing. Oh, thank you for correcting that. For a second there, I thought you could see sounds, and, well, that's synesthesia, and God forbid there's actually something about you that's genuinely interesting to talk about. No, you need to remain the uninteresting, potato-faced, sack of stupid that you are for all time. Otherwise, I might feel bad for laughing at you. Might. I guess it really wouldn't change anything about your stupid f***ing opinions. When I was a sophomore in high school, I so loved it. I lived in Brooklyn, New York, you so loved that music that you lived in Brooklyn. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. You know there are other places that have music venues, right? Oh, of course, he's not saying he did that because of the other. He's just prattling incoherently, as is his prerogative. I just don't know why anyone listens to his opinions on, well, anything, really. And I was, uh, I had a Carnegie Hall, most famous music hall in America, you had a Carnegie Hall? My God, how rich were your parents? Mine wouldn't even buy me a single Sydney Opera House. Kept saying that they barely had enough money to buy food and get shelter. I'm pretty sure the Sydney Opera House has both of those things, bloody cheapskates. And don't get me started on the measly castle I was willing to settle for. I had to get one on my own. And look at it, it's been burning for literal years. Although at this point, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well made, apparently. I had a Carnegie Hall ticket that was given to high school kids for one dollar. All right, one dollar. <laughs> Bloody hell, here we go. Old Dennis is going to go full old and start talking about how he could take a cab across town, see a movie, have a meal at a nice restaurant, f countless prostitutes and still have change from a five dollar bill enough to go to Carnegie Hall. I'm sure you did, mate. But that literally doesn't f***ing mean anything when the value of money changes over the years. Christ, I am so sick of hearing that shit. Now you can barely buy half a penny sweet for that, and that doesn't even make any sense. And since I did no homework for four years of high school... 
Wait, 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 wait. Denny boy here was a crap student? Well, colour me all the surprised. And look, I know homework is one of those things that has some problems with usefulness, especially at younger ages, but at the time, and for his audience, I am pretty sure not doing it is a sign of absolutely abysmal work ethic and academic ability. I mean, I should know, I barely did any homework, and I'm a f***ing idiot. But the difference is, I don't claim to have started a f***ing university. I was interested in everything else, Everything else? Everything? Well, then we can only conclude that Dennis was in fact a Satan-worshipping, pot-injecting, joyride-taking lunatic who could only feel any joy and satisfaction in his life when he was setting fire to orphanages and kicking puppies off the tops of skyscrapers. But that doesn't make any sense because I don't remember being Dennis growing up. I decided I'll just take, I took a dollar ticket to ballet, I got a dollar ticket to an opera, I got a dollar ticket to a concert. Look mate, stop pretending to be this refined enjoyer of the arts, it doesn't really even matter if you were, but I'm just not buying it anyway. Mostly because I'm not convinced you even know how to operate a ticket, and would instead end up decapitating yourself with one somehow. Although I would totally buy a ticket to see you do that, although, to be fair, we all know I would just end up doing the same thing as well. I got a dollar ticket to a museum, I got a, a, whatever it was, a dollar ticket, oh, to Shakespeare, whatever. I don't remember, but it was definitely something fancy that will impress my audience, and more importantly, impress God with my great taste. Although, you f***ed up Dennis, me old plate. God doesn't like that shit, opera is just annoying and Shakespeare's not got enough explosions in it to keep his attention. He's more of a Fast and the Furious guy. If God had a God, it would be Vin Diesel, which makes way too much sense now that I'm thinking about it. I wanted to, I wanted to experience everything. So I figured, what the hell, if I don't like it, I lost a dollar. Big deal. Well, actually, a dollar in the 1960s, around about when you would have quote-unquote grown up, was about $10 today, and that $10 could buy you a bottle of the finest bargain basement whiskey, maybe even more. And if you wanted to waste your precious money on something that didn't make your throat bleed, you could still get like half a bottle. So yeah, you would be massively missing out if you didn't like it. Why even take that kind of terrible risk? Even then, one could say big deal. Even though it was a lot more money than it is today. See, what did I tell you? Dennis doing the old git thing of back in my day. -ing. Well, back in my day, there were none of you pesky who mans. You could walk around and no one would try to talk to you, and no one would wake you up at six in the morning with a phone call saying, Oh, I didn't wake you, did I? Forcing you to pretend that you didn't just wake up and pretend that you had any idea who, what, or where you were. Because the insane person on the other end of the phone likes to wake up at practically midnight. No, I'm not bitter, Mum. Well, anyway, I went, and it was it was literally love at first sight, first hearing, because I'm looking and hearing. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, Mr. Talented. You can see and hear at the same time. Next, you're going to tell me that you were breathing too. Perhaps even digesting food and processing it into energy that you then transported around your body in order to feed your various parts so you don't die. But not thinking though. We know you weren't doing that because you never do that. Too dangerous. You wouldn't want the everything else to shut down, would you? I was up in the balcony quite far from the musicians. Well, thank the Lord our whiskey that you weren't any closer, otherwise the musicians might have gotten distracted by your gormless expression and bonts the shape of a popular root vegetable and accidentally explode their instruments out of the sheer shonk. But I was mesmerized. I was mesmerized intellectually. Oh, f off, you were mesmerized intellectually. That would require you to, well, anything intellectually. And this again from the man who never bothered to do his goddamn homework for four years in high school. And even I actually did some of my bloody homework. Poorly, mind, but I tried. Although apparently, what I should have done is gone to see some people playing some music in a big room, and that would have sufficed for a complete education, and qualified me to run a fake university. F*** I'm probably overqualified for that already by your standards, mate. I've been to a rock concert, which is worth like 50 orchestras, because cool. Aesthetically, emotionally, in every way. See, I told you, he definitely left a sticky wet patch in that seat. 
God damn it, mate. You are the poster child for keep it in your damned pants. And are we going to get to the bit where the music is and because God, though? The title of this video is, Is Music a Gift from God, After All? And if I remember, I'm probably going to call my response something along the lines of God Invented Music, because it's so dumb, and I think it's funny. Just like you. So much so that I spent my next month's lunch money on concert tickets. So what you're telling me is that you lied to your parents. They gave you money specifically so that you could go have some freaking food, but instead you had intellectual fun, as opposed to eating the food that they literally wanted you to do. Now don't get me wrong, I used to do similar shit as a child, but then again, I didn't make a video about the Ten Commandments and how it's totally important, including Honour thy mother and thy father, you bloody great hypocrite. I missed lunch for the next a month to buy concert tickets. It's totally worth it to me. But you made up for it in the years since, eh? No, it's okay, I can make light of his weight, because I am fat too, so it balances out. Which is ironic, because I am neither light, nor do I have a good balance because of all the fat. Look, you try doing my job without comfort eating if you're so f***ing healthy and well-adjusted, mate. And to this day, you ask about the, the divine? Oh, finally, only took you umpteen zillion years to swing back to the point instead of having to listen to him prattle on about his unremarkable childhood and complete lack of education. Cool. Hopefully his point will be smart and not vague nonsense purely about his feelings. So Bach in particular, uh, this is what I say. I have, uh, I have three favorite composers. I have many I love, but three favorites. Bach, Beethoven, and Haydn. Well, they are some of the greats, famous composers and all seemingly religious guys to boot, but that doesn't really mean anything, because if being religious is enough to make you able to write some of the most enduring music of all time, then anyone writing music specifically for God should be shitting out bangers every single time. Stick on top of that the modern technologies that make creating music easier than ever, then pretty much everything in the chart should be an absolute bop about Mr. Godric and the God made Muzak. Unfortunately, when I think of music written specifically for God, 90% of it is this shit. All the other MCs, I wish them well, but if you live in sin, you burn in hell. And frankly, as hilariously bad as those lyrics are, many of you know, that's by far not the worst bit. When I want to feel the divine, I listen to Bach. So I just spent a long ass time listening to the best of Buck, and while it was nice, some of it beautiful even, I'm sure, divine was not a word that I would use to describe it. Not, again, in the way that den means it was. Because, well, it was fine. Maybe it's because I'm an evil, atheismo-loving, god-hating non-believer, but it did nothing for me except make me nod off for a couple of hours. On an unrelated note, the whole thing was about an hour and 50 minutes long. What? When I want to be happy, or happier, I listen to Haydn. Oh, a bit of a Freudian slip there, I think, mate. Are you saying that you're not happy? I scarcely believe that. I mean, saying dumb shit to your dumb audience on the regs, why, that's got to be the most happiest making of all the jobs there could ever be in the history of ever. I mean, what do they say? Ignorance is bliss, yeah? And when I want to feel powerful, and I don't mean it in a, in a narcissistic sense, that... No, you already do that. Why would you need any help? In fact, you're so good at feeling that way, no one should even dare to try to help. Because you're just so much better than everyone else, right? Look, I know I keep bringing it up, but he literally started a fake university that he acts like is a real university. If he's not staggeringly narcissistic, then I'm not currently drunk, and we all know that can't be true. Giving me strength to, to fight for what I believe in, I listen to Beethoven. No, mate, no, mate, no, mate, don't do it. Don't fight Dennis. It's not worth it. He's been listening to Beethoven. You won't like him when he's been listening to Beethoven. Just walk away and let him calm down. Then you can go back and tell him that his literary output lacks nuance and his prose is pedestrian. He'll f***ing hate that. They, they have very different effects on me. He says as if various music having different effects on people depending on how it sounds is not something that literally happens to everyone ever. But no, of course, it's just you, mate, because you are so very special. And I mean that in the most condescending way possible. But I, I will answer your question in a very interesting way. Cough, not narcissistic. Cough, cough. I have argued for years 
that music is an argument for God's existence. But no, it fucking isn't. In fact, the very, you know, fact that music and other types of man-made art can give you the exact same feeling of awe and wonder that many feel when they have a quote-unquote divine experience screams to me that much like when you think about that book that made you see things in a whole new way, the album that made your entire body tingle, or that movie that brings tears of joy to your eye every time you see it. God is just another thing that humans made to make other humans feel certain things when they think about how amazing he is. Just like you can feel the same feelings, especially after you do some exercise specifically designed to make you feel that way, whilst some asshole tells you that that's totally God making you feel that shit. It's simple psychological manipulation. And sometimes that's okay when it's just a piece of art or fiction, but when it's to get people to do as they are told, that's, well, a lot less okay. Because music has no evolutionary use. None. Wow, that's a lot stupider than I thought it was going to be. Aesthetics have lots of evolutionary uses. The very fact that human beings spread across the world because they saw something pleasing and thought, what's over there? I need to look at it, is exactly how they became the globe-spanning menace they are today. And once they had done that, they still had the aesthetic sense, so they needed to fulfil it somehow. So they started making things themselves. And of course, ultimately, back to a point I made before, if you think that music can't get people laid, you know, the very foundation of evolution, then I think you're doing music wrong, mate. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, Check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-